In this video, we're going to learn how to use trig ratios to help us determine missing side lengths in right triangles. So the first thing you have to be able to do is put these trig functions into your calculator. So if you look at these, all of these angles um, that we're trying to find the trig ratio of are all in degrees. So that means you have to tell your calculator that you want to enter degrees, you want to be in degree mode. Um, and that's only really going to be important when you're dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent, and if you're putting in degrees. So if you go to your home screen of your calculator, and if you go to 5 for settings, and then you go to document settings, so 5, 2 basically, so I hit settings, hit settings again, and then the second line from the top, you see angle, that needs to read degree. So if it says radian, go ahead and arrow on it, and then say degree. And once you've done that, then you can just say make default and then say OK. And now all new documents will go into degree mode. Um, so from there, I can go to calculate. See how up top here it says DEG? That means I'm in degree mode, so it means I'm set. I'm good to go. So now in order to enter in sine of 42 degrees, these are all trig ratios. So we're going to go to the trig feature in our calculator. So hit the trig button. And across the top here, you see sine, cosine, and tangent. Make sure you're not using these um, inverse trig functions is what we call them with a little negative one. We'll talk about those later. And then these other functions here you'll learn in Algebra 2. So for right now, we're just going to be focusing on sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to hit sine of 42 degrees. You don't need to enter in degrees because your calculator is already in degree mode. So sine of 42, hit enter, and there you have it. So what this means is in a right triangle where you have a 42 degree angle, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is going to be this 0.669131. Because remember, that's what sine really means. So with respect to the 42 degree angle in the right triangle. So the directions here say round to the nearest hundredth. So I have the 9 in the thousandths position. That's going to bump that 6 up to a 7. So it's going to be 0.67. So let's go ahead and just get that in our notes. So we have 0.67. And then let's do one more here. So cosine 38. So you're going to hit the trig button again. Cosine 38 degrees. And then if, when you look at this, it's 0.788. That 8 will bump that other 8 up to a 9. So it's going to be 0.79. So go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and fill in the other degrees here or the other um, ratios. And then play the video and check your answers and see if you have them right. So go ahead, pause the video and then check back in a second. So now you can see um, that I've actually gone through and filled in all of these. So just take a look and see if you have the same answers. If not, I'm just bringing the questions with you tomorrow's class. So one thing too, just reminder that you need to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Um, make sure calculator is in degree mode. And remember that was the home screen and then 5, 2 is what I hit. And then just making sure you change it to, to say degree for the angle. So let's go ahead and look at, well now, how do we actually use these? So if you look at this first example here, um, you have a right triangle, you have an X on there, and you're trying to find X. So in the past, when you have a right triangle, you know to use Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side. The issue with using Pythagorean theorem right now is we don't have two out of the three sides. We don't have enough information to be able to do that. So what you can use is you can use your trig ratios. And since we know an angle and we're trying to find a missing side, that kind of indicates, okay, let's use um, our trig ratios. Let's use our trig functions. So let's look at, first of all, if this is the angle I have, the 37, let's go ahead and just label our side. So this is going to be the opposite. This is the adjacent. And across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. 
So when we think about Sokatoa, and based on what's given in the picture here, I don't have anything on the opposite. There's nothing there. I'm not going to use it. So that means anything with an O in it, I don't want to use because I don't have the opposite. So that means the ratio that I can write right now is cosine of 37 degrees because I'm trying to find the adjacent and I know the hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do to set this up, I'm going to say cosine, and remember we always put the angle, of 37 degrees is equal to the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So there's my setup. So now I have an equation that's going to allow me to solve for x. So this time I can actually solve for x because I have enough information. Cosine of 37, remember, is just a number. We were just doing stuff like that up top there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over 1 and cross multiply. So it's going to be x equals 14 times cosine 37. Put that all in my calculator, and that will give me x. So 14, go to the trig button, cosine 37, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth according to the directions. So I'm getting 11.1809, so it's going to be 11.2 when I round that. And there's my answer. Now, remember with these, I used the 37, but I could have actually found this other acute angle because all three angles have to add up to 180. And then if I would have used this angle, well, then I would have been using the opposite in the hypotenuse, which would have been fine. It just means I would have been using sine instead of cosine. And in the end, you would get the same answer. But why do all that extra work when you already have the 37? So you might as well just use what's given to you. So if we look at the next one, same idea. We're going to look at using what's given to us. So we have 62 degrees here. This is going to be my opposite side. This is going to be the adjacent. And the hypotenuse is right here. So if I think about Sokotoa, think about my trig ratios, I don't have anything on the hypotenuse. So anything with an H in it, I'm not going to use. I'm going to be using tan because I have the opposite and the adjacent. I have either a variable or a number on those sides. So it's always tan of the angle. So the angle is 62. Remember that angle is so important because that's what these sides are. Uh, it's the opposite and adjacent with respect to that angle. So you have to make sure you're including that angle. Equals the opposite over the adjacent. And now we can put this over 1 and cross multiply. So we get x equals 63 times tan 62 in your calculator. So x equals, so 63, go to the trig button, tan of 62. So 63 times tan of 62 is going to give me 118. And again, we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So I get 0.486 in my calculator, but I'm going to round that up to 0.5. So 118.5. And these are side lengths, so they're not going to have degrees on them. They're just whatever the units of the sides are. If you don't like using like tan 62 in your calculator um, at this step, if you would rather convert it to a decimal, you can do that right away. Like if you'd rather make that a decimal for your proportion, that's fine. Just make sure that in your calculator you're using the exact decimal. So meaning you're not rounding until the very end. So you can always scroll up to that number in your calculator um, and just select it. And I can show you that again in class tomorrow just to, as a reminder. So then the last one here, same idea. We have our hypotenuse. We have our acute angle here. This is going to make that side the opposite. This side over here is the adjacent. Not going to be using the adjacent this time. Nothing on it. So when we think Sokotoa, we're not using anything with an A in it. So that means we're left with sine. So it's going to be sine of the angle. So sine of 43 degrees is equal to the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So there's our setup. And in this particular problem, this is kind of like what I was talking about. Some people would rather convert this to a decimal right away because when you cross multiply, you end up with sine 43, which is just a number, times x is equal to 32. So some people would rather make that sine 43 a number right now um, or a decimal so that they see it as a number versus sine of 43, even though it still is a number. But once you see that, 
um, you're trying to get x by itself, that just means you're really going to be dividing by sine of 43. So you're going to divide this time by sine 43. So those cancel. So I end up with 32 divided by, and then in parentheses, trig button, sine 43. Hit enter. You should be getting 46.9 for this. And like I said, if you don't like leaving it with sign, you can use a decimal, but make sure you're using the entire decimal in your calculator by um, arrowing up and selecting that number when you go to do your division. Um, so that's the idea here. So very important to label your triangle so that you make sure you're picking the correct trig ratio, and then you're plugging in, making sure your calculator's in degree mode um, to find these missing sides. So Pythagorean theorem still applies. It's just for all three of these examples, we only had one out of all three sides. And since we knew one of the acute angles, we could use right triangle trig. So that's the main purpose of it, is to be able to find that missing side. So go ahead, get your key ideas down, and then we will talk about those in class tomorrow.